Hallelujah. Amen. Now I talk about how to worship and uh, how to worship from, uh, Jesus said, to worship in spirit and in truth. How do we worship in spirit and truth? And how do we have a close relationship with God? And how we can enjoy the relationship with God? Uh, this is all very important. This is basic to our relationship with God. And then the next step is then when you know how to worship and then you can um, um, help people, lead people to uh, go into worship. So first I want to talk about how to worship ourselves. And in order to understand worship, we want to understand God. Many people's idea of God is He's very far away. It's hard to reach Him. This is totally wrong. The Bible says that God is close to us. He's ministering to us. In Psalm 139 verse 5, He's in front of us and behind us, and He's laying His hand on us. So God Himself is ministering to us even before we became a Christian. God will guide you and plan your situation so that you can hear the gospel and prepare your heart. Have you noticed that? That before you became a Christian, God arranged the situation so that you can get in contact with Christianity, with Jesus, and then He will arrange people to help you. Have you noticed that? Now that is God working in your life before you became a Christian. Although He cannot stay in your heart because we have sinned, unforgiven sins, because we have not trusted in Jesus as our Savior, God already started to work in your life. Before I became a Christian when I was young already, God prepared a way, I saw that, but I'm not going into that in detail. So before you became a Christian, He already planned your life and worked in your life. And after you became a Christian, when you, well, or at the moment you believe in Jesus, it's Him who moved in you. Have you noticed when you hear the message about Jesus? Uh, you might hear it in a service or in an evangelistic meeting or when someone tells you about Jesus, that you feel your heart being touched. Have you noticed that? That you are drawn to believe in Jesus. How many of you have experienced that? Before you believe, before you say, I want to believe in Jesus, when you heard about Jesus, your heart would just be stirred up and touched by God. Have you noticed that? Can you raise your hand if you have noticed that before you became a Christian? When someone tell you about Jesus, when you hear Christian songs, when you get in contact with Jesus, it already, uh, the message will start to speak to you and you feel touch in your heart. If you feel that, can you raise your hand? Okay. Now this is God working through the Word of God. As soon as the Word of God is preached, He will talk to you. He will guide you. And then you are drawn to believe in Jesus. And when you, after you believe in Jesus, have you noticed that? Then you notice that the reminding voice in your heart to remind you not to sin. I noticed that very clearly when I believe in Jesus. Uh, actually, at that time, I, you know, no one invited me to church. But once someone invited me to an evangelistic meeting, and I raised my hand, but my schoolmates never asked me to go to church. They just, they didn't invite. But then, I was given a uh, correspondent course to know about Jesus. And so I, I, I studied that course. And then in the process, I found that in my heart, when I do something wrong, my heart feels unhappy, feels sad, feels burdened. There is a reminder in my heart. That is the voice of the Holy Spirit. That in says, it says in uh, John chapter 6, 16 verse 8, that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will uh, convict our heart of sin, of righteousness and of judgment in John 16 verse 8 that the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin of righteousness and of judgment let me ask you how many of you have that experience 
that after you believe in Jesus, you just find yourself. When you sin, you just feel unhappy. You feel some a voice remind you don't not to sin. Have have you noticed that? You to raise your hand. Now that is the voice of God speaking to us. We, you know, we are serving a living God. That's wonderful news because we're not serving an idol. We're not serving a wood wooden idol. We're serving a living God. The moment. You know, actually before we became a Christian, God already arranged the situation to draw us to Jesus. And then, as soon as you believe in Jesus, you find the voice keep talking to you. And, and then, after you became a Christian, when you sit down and read the Bible and pray, or you pray yourself, or you worship God in the church, have you noticed peace, comfort, in your heart or joy have you noticed that could you raise your hand when you believe in jesus you notice the voice speaking to you what i'm telling you you is god comes to us first god seeks us first the bible says that jesus came to seek the lost he seeks you we we don't seek him he sought us he, he sought us to find us to draw us to Him. So when you understand that, then you know, God, you're right here. You're looking for me. Even after we're Christian, He keeps looking for us. He keeps talking to us in our heart. Have you noticed that? He draws you to follow God. The more you obey Him, the more you hear the voice of God, not, not necessarily a verbal, you know, a verbal voice. You don't necessarily hear a voice talking to you but you just have this move in your heart that you want to follow God have you have this voice that talk to you guide you to follow God and obey God and preach the gospel and and follow and obey God and serve God if you have that can you raise your hand if you have this voice talking to you tell you to obey and, and follow God now this is all the work of God so can we say it together? God is working in my heart all the time. Say it. God is working in my heart all the time. God is seeking me all the time. God is drawing me to Him all the time. God is very happy when we come to Him. Now, so when you understand this, it's God who seeks us first. It's God who loves us, loves us first. We love because God first loves, loved us. So it's God who loved us first. When you understand that, then you would not be afraid. God, where are you? God, you're too far away. I don't know where you are. So many people are like, I like that. God, I need you. I want you, but where are you? It is because many people did not understand. God is really seeking you. So when you worship God, Believe that it's God who draw you to worship Him. He works in our heart to worship Him. And when you worship Him, He will work in your heart. He will give you peace and love and joy. Now the, uh, the Bible in many places talk about this. God is working in our heart and God is happy. Um, Zephaniah 3.17. Zephaniah is a minor prophet. Z-E-P-H Zephaniah P-H-A-N-I-A-H The Zephaniah 317 You can listen to me You, you can write down Zephaniah 317 The second part he'll, pray, he'll take great delight in you He will quiet you with His love He will rejoice over you with singing What it says here is that God takes great delight in you He is happy with you don't, don't look for the Bible passage if you uh, can I find it because it's hard to find. It's a minor, one of the minor prophets. It's hard to find. But if you have a sheet of paper and a pen, you can write down the, the verse and then you can look at it later. Zephaniah, Z E P H, that's an abbreviation. He takes great delight in you. That is very happy to see you. And he quiets you with his love. He will. 
put His love in you to quiet you, to calm you, to comfort you. And He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you. He will be very happy with you with singing. So God is looking for us and when we come to God, He is very happy. When you understand all this, it will change your concept of coming to God and worshiping God. Because very often we think God is far away, then it will be hard to worship. But when you know God is right here. So when you worship God, you can tell yourself, God is very happy with me now when I start to worship. God likes me to worship Him. God is very happy with me. God will come to bless me. And in Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9, Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9, here David talk about his relationship with God, what he does. He said, I have set the Lord always before me. That means he have the Lord in front of him, he come close to the Lord. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices and my body also will rest secure. So he says that in Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9, that when he come close to the Lord, he will not be shaken and he will rejoice. Therefore, my heart is glad Then his heart is happy. My tongue rejoices and my body will also, also will rest secure. That means God will put his joy and comfort to him. God will put his joy and comfort to his heart and his body as soon as he come close to the Lord. So I hope you believe that. When you come close to the Lord, the Lord will come to bless you right away. Now every time we come close to the Lord, He will come to bless you right away. He's very happy. So when you worship God, the first thing, remember, God is very happy to bless you. God is drawing you to Him. God is blessing you. So that's the first thing when you worship God. You know, this afternoon, I spent a long time praying to God. Maybe two or three hours. I spent a long time praying to God. Now why would I, I have that motivation to come to the Lord? Because I know God is always happy to be with me. And God will bless me. And when I worship God, I, I pray to God in my heart. Oh Lord, you're so good. In the process, I'm enjoying the whole time. I'm enjoying the whole time. I'm enjoying God's presence in this prayer this afternoon. I enjoy God for a long time and His presence will come to me because I come in confidence. According to God's word, He is seeking me, He wants to be with me, He's very happy to be with me. When I worship Him, He'll come to me. So I enjoy whenever I have time. Let me tell you, when I'm not ministering to people, when I'm not writing my material, I'll be worshiping God for a long time. Every day I will spend time worshiping Him and loving Him. And every time He will come to me. So in worship, the first thing, say with me, that we know that God is very happy that we worship Him. Say it together. God is very happy that we worship Him. God is very happy when we come close to Him. God is saying, God is very happy when we come close to Him. When we worship Him, He will come to bless us. When we worship Him, he will come to bless us. So this is something you need to believe in your heart. So anytime, anywhere, when you pray, believe that He's there to bless you. And He's very happy. That way, your worship will be easy. That you don't have to say, I have to do something to make God come to me. You don't. You just have to like Him in your heart and appreciate Him in your heart. In, in your heart. That you really like Him then He will come to you. Now, in a worship, how can you make the worship more powerful? How can you make the worship more powerful? The first is to have faith, believing that He is happy to bless you. The second is worship in spirit and in truth. Worship in your whole heart. Now, for many people, dancing, shouting, it helps. It helps because it makes you more relaxed, more happy. 
Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It helps you. It helps you to open your heart and more relax. It is helpful. So keep doing that. Keep doing that. It's good for you. But you want to go a next step. Not just singing and dancing, shouting. Doing this is good. The next step, when you are relaxed, when you are happy in the Lord, worship in the Spirit and in truth. But you will say how to do that. Let me analyze it for you. If you have pen and paper, please write this down. We have to learn to worship with our spirit and our soul. Worship with our spirit and our soul. The Bible talks about worship the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So you learn to do that with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. What does that mean? With all your heart, your whole heart. Oh God, you're so good, I worship you. From the whole heart, we appreciate God. That is the key to building a close relationship with God. God is very good. Do you believe, do you know that God is very good? Have you experienced God? Yes. Is God very good? Yes. Have, have God helped you in your difficulties? Yes. And has God healed your body? Have you experienced healing to your body? Have you experienced freedom? The burdens go away. So God is blessing you. And God, is, God keeps talking to you. Have you experienced God keep talking to your heart? Glory to Him. So he is ministering to you all the time. So learn to like him with all your heart. That's something we all can learn. Like God. Let me ask you. Do you like your mother? Do you like your mother? Because your mother has been nice to you, right? Is God nicer or is your mother nicer? God is nicer. Is God more powerful or your mother more powerful? God is more powerful. Now, you should like your mother. You should appreciate your mother. You should honor your mother. But if we can honor our mother and love our mother, should we also love God more and honor Him more? Yes, because He's so nice. So when you want to worship, you want to think about God all day long. God is so nice. Say it with me. God is so nice. God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. God is totally good. God is totally powerful. God can help me in everything I need. So if you want your life to be better, He can help you. He can make you happier. You know, as I told you before, I, when I grew up, I lived a difficult life. And I had bad dreams. The dreams went so bad, and let me tell you how bad the dream was. Because of the suppression in the family. Because of the yelling and the beating. Mostly it's the yelling. That made my heart so burdened. That one time I had a dream. I built a wall. I was building a wall. But by the time I finished building the wall, I found that I was inside the wall. You build a wall inside the wall. And by the time I finished the bricks, I was inside the wall, so I was afraid. What did I do? I hit the wall. And when I hit the wall, the wall was not strong like this. It was softer material. When I hit the wall, the wall broke. There was a hole there. That was how bad my dreams were. But when I knew Jesus, He set me free. And then after I experienced the Holy Spirit, He set me more and more free that I had different bad dreams. Do you have bad dreams? Do you have bad dreams? Sometimes? Sometimes when you, did you see dangerous situation in your dreams? And then you get afraid? Now that is because you have fear in your heart. Now God healed my heart so that now I don't have these fearful dreams. God set me free. And has God made you more and more peaceful that you have less fearful dreams? Do you have less fearful dreams now? Now that, is, that means God is healing you. So you say, God is good. Say it together. God is good. God set me free. God helped me to enjoy life. 
and I can enjoy life more and more. And my life will go better and better. So this is something when we worship, we should think about how good God is. And then we really like Him with all my heart. I really like Him and worship Him. Let me distinguish the soul. The soul, usually people say there are three areas. The mind, can you say with me, the mind, the will, and the uh, feelings or emotion. Okay, say it together. The mind, the will, the emotions. Okay. And then we have the spirit. So let's go through this one by one. The mind. Some of us, the mind might be afraid of God. God is too harsh. Some people think God is too harsh. God's requirement is too high. Let me tell you, God's requirement is very high. Yes, true. But when you cannot meet the requirement, you just ask Him, please forgive me. I don't want to sin. I want to follow you and obey you. Then God is happy. As soon as you say, I'm really sorry for my sins, then God will accept you. God is easy to please. Say it together. God is easy to please. Now we can never be perfect. But when you repent of your sin, God is happy with you. When you are truly repentant of your sin, God is very happy with you. So you want to say God is very good to me and don't say God is harsh. God requires us to go higher and higher. But every step when you cannot do it, you ask Him to forgive you, He will help you. And then He will help you go higher and higher. Now He does have high requirement. He, he will have higher requirement from me. He expects me not to fall into sin as easily as most Christians. He expects me to really take care of my sins because I have a high level of relationship with Him. But anytime I cannot do it perfectly, I ask Him to forgive me, He'll forgive me. Even when you're not perfect, say it. Even when we're not perfect, when we ask Him to forgive us, He will forgive us. And He's pleased with us. So every day when you try to follow Him, He's very happy with you. Say it. Every time when I try to follow Him, He'll be very happy. Every time when I try to trust in Him, He's very happy. Every time when I try to serve Him, He's very happy. So I want to say is, God is easy to please. Say it again. God is easy to please. The Bible says, you give a cup of cold water to a little ones. By no means will you lose your reward, right? So God is easy to please. Anytime one sinner repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. That includes Christians. When Christians repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. When you have this faith, let me tell you, you will like God more. Many people don't like God, why? Because they think God is hard to please. They think it's too hard to obey God in every way. It's true, it's hard to obey God in every way. But whenever you fail, you ask Him to forgive. And then you try. Every time you try, you try to obey Him. And He's very happy. Have you tried to... Have you repent of your sins today? Have you tried to obey Him? Have you? If you have tried, God is happy. Say it together with me. If I have tried to obey Him, He is very happy. Now, it means try is not like this. You sit there. Okay, I'll try to love God. But you say, God, I try to love you. I try to obey you. I try to be nice to people. And you really do it. Then God is happy. Can you put this in your memory? Remember that God is easy to please. Say it together again. I want you to keep this in your mind. God is easy to please. When I obey Him, He is very happy. When I take a little step to follow Him, He is very happy. Can you believe that? Now that makes worship easy and make your mind totally in agreement with God. Some people have negative thought like, oh, God is too hard, God is too far away, God doesn't help me. Many people have this thought. 
I encourage you to take away all these negative thoughts about God. Let me tell you, in my heart, I'm 1,000% saying God is good. 1,000% I like God. Because God is so good, you don't find anyone like Him. Do you totally like God? Do you like God? So I hope you remember, God is likable. God is lovely. God is lovable. Then your mind will say, God is good, I want to follow Him totally. But many people have schizophrenia. What does it mean? They believe in Jesus, they want to follow the world. Because the mind is not for God. They want to follow the world. Because they think, I follow the world, I'll get better things. Is that true? When we follow the world, do we get better things? No. When we follow God, we get better things. It doesn't mean you don't work. We all need to work. You need to work, but at the same time you love God. You follow God, you don't follow the world. You, you have to serve in the world. You have to serve. You have to work in your job. But when you do it, you don't serve the world. You serve God. You obey God. When you totally follow God, God is very happy with you. So in our mind, when you worship, you say, God is totally good. God is wonderful. Now I'm going to sh show this excitement. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Can you worship like that? My heart is always like that. My heart is exploding with the love of God. It's exploding with how good God is. I, I'm just, because I just want to show you that excitement I have in my heart. Because God is so good. I stand up to do it. So the mind is totally saying, God is good. Say it with me. The mind, my mind is saying, God is good. And then the next thing is the will. The will means, I want you. I want you. Some people want to earn more money. Some people want to get married only. I mean, just want to get my own thing. I want popularity. But I hope you want God. Let me tell you, my heart totally wants God. I want God and His blessings and God's way to bless people. I, I seek God and say, Lord, guide me how to use my life totally for you. I want to live my life totally for you and nothing else. I just want to bless people. My will is all for God. Not 90%, it's 100%. Now, although when I live it out, sometimes maybe I fail to follow God 100%, but my desire is to say, yes, I want to follow God totally. Now, how about your heart? Is your heart after money, job now? To, to make money, to find a job is not wrong. But is your heart saying, one day I want to have a lot of money, I can spend, I want money, I want money, I like money, I like money. Is your heart like that or is your heart like, yes Lord, I want you, I want to follow you and you bless me, you help me, you provide for me, I don't have to worry about money. I just follow God. Is your heart totally to follow God? If your heart is totally want to follow God, then it's easy to worship. God, I just want to follow you. I just want to worship you. I just want my spirit to fly to you. Okay? And then, emotions or feelings. When you see your mom or your children, your good friend, are you happy? You have good feelings, right? Do you have good feelings when you see your bed? Do you have good feelings when you see? When you go to sleep and see your bed, you have good feelings? Yeah, right? You have good feelings with something in your home that belongs to you, right? So we have good feelings about many things. Do you have good feelings toward God? And what I'm talking about is the whole person that will really treasure God. That will help us to worship. My whole feeling, let me tell you. Some people ask me, what is my entertainment? I told him, I pray, that's my entertainment. Although I do play tennis, but praying to God is my entertainment. People say, how can you, 
How can praying be entertainment? Let me tell you, when I pray, oh, I really enjoy <laughs> I enjoy more than playing tennis. I play tennis to keep myself healthy. But when I pray, oh, hallelujah, I enjoy I enjoy God. I like God. Everything I see, I think of God. When I see water, I drink water, I think of God. God created water. So wonderful. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like God. I eat the food, I like God. It all came from God. When I see good people turning to God, I like God. I see how people are changed. When I pray for people, I see people change, experience God, I like God because God works in people's heart. In my heart, I really like God. I like God more than I like my money. Mm. Let me tell you, if one day, when there is the big persecution, the Bible talks about big persecution, and one day, we might not have any money, or even if you have money, it's no use. Because the Bible said, you have to have the stamp of the devil in order to buy or to sell. At that time, even if, if you have money, you might not be able to buy food. You have to worship Satan to be able to buy food. But in that situation, I would still say, I have God. That's the best. Even if I have to starve to death, starve to death, it's okay. Now, in the last days, the Antichrist is going to kill many Christians. But it's okay. If I have to die, I will go to heaven. I don't mind. I like God so much, even if I lose everything. I thank God for everything I have now, but I don't hold on to those things. One day, if I have to lose them, it's okay. Above all, I like God. Do you like God? 100%. So we worship with our mind. God is good. Every, I agree with God. Say it with me. I agree with God. Agree. God is the best. Oh, yes. So my mind totally agrees with God. My mind totally agrees with God. And my mind agrees with the Bible. Agrees with every teaching in the Bible. So that my mind and then my will. I want to serve God. I want to follow God. I want to follow God. I work, but I don't, but work is not my dream. Money is not my dream. My will is to serve God. And then, enjoy. I enjoy God. My feeling is all for God. I like God. And then the spirit. Now, the spirit is hard to describe. The spirit is how we relate to God. But when you can worship with your mind, your will, and your emotions, you're already doing very well. If you can worship with these three, say with me. Worship with the mind. Worship with the will. Worship with the emotions. It's already very good. And the next step is worship with the spirit. Now, the spirit is hard to describe. In Psalm 103 verse 1, Psalm 103 verse 1, it says that all that is in me will praise His holy name. Say with me, all that is in me will praise the holy name. Now, all that is in me, that means inside my body is my spirit and my soul. All that is in me will include the spirit and my soul. So worship with all my being, my whole person, all that is in me, worship God. And it's hard to describe. And I would, that's why sometimes I tell people to worship, like cry to God from your heart. Hallelujah! <laughs> from the whole being. Hallelujah! I love you. Oh, cry out from the heart. Hallelujah! 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 I worship the Lord. I worship you. To worship from the whole spirit. When you do that, you are doing very well. So when you lead worship, you do that yourself. Now I know that 
In Africa, you like to dance. It's good. When you dance, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. When you do that, you just not sing. It's not just singing. But it's like your spirit ascend to God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, I worship you. It's the whole person go with God. Oh, the whole mind, the whole will, the whole emotions, and the whole spirit. Worship God. Hallelujah. That way, every time you worship, God's presence will be very strong. Amen. I just said, God will come to us, God's service all the time. But I want to tell you that though, God's presence is different for each person. That's why the Bible says some people are filled with the Holy Spirit. Not everyone is filled with the Holy Spirit. Some people, all Christians have the Holy Spirit, but it's like a container. Some people have a little, you know, the Holy Spirit only fill a small part of it. Some people is filled with the Holy Spirit more. When you worship God with all your heart, so next time when you worship, you worship with your whole spirit. Oh Lord, you're so wonderful, hallelujah. <laughs> You look at my facial expression when I talk about worshiping God. Have you noticed how happy I am? Oh Lord, I love you. I like you. Let me tell you, when you work and worship like that, it will heal your feelings. Your feeling can be free again. Your whole person will be free. You won't have these bad dreams anymore. You won't have these fearful dreams anymore. Your whole person will be healed. The presence of God will be stronger and stronger and stronger. Let me tell you, in some places when they worship wholeheartedly like that, what happened? In one place in America, one time, they were worshiping God wholeheartedly. And then in this building, there was a ceiling. But from nowhere, a lightning came. <laughs> the lightning came from inside the building and hit the altar and the whole altar was split in two. And everyone experienced great power and the pastor was thrown back 10 feet away. The power of God just came down like that. That when people worship God wholeheartedly, that God's presence can come very powerfully. And then there was one man who went to Brazil and he worshiped God and then God told him, take off your shoes because you're on holy ground. And then when he took off his shoes and then his spirit left the body in the worship, and ascend above the tent and go higher and higher and then after he came back he started to see angels he started to see angels um, this person is called Gary Oates Gary G-A-R-Y O-A-T-E-S Gary Oates he wrote a book about that that when the, in the worship his spirit came out of the body and ascend up and then he saw angels and then when he came down he saw angels and he and then he saw angels behind the person and know he know that god is healing that person and he said pray god is blessing you and then that person is healed he saw angels serving that person that's how powerful god's presence is on some people in the bible recorded that peter when he walked by the people next to him they were healed and and Paul, that people took handkerchiefs and aprons from him and put on the sick people and they are healed. I actually heard a story like that. Billy Graham. You know Billy Graham, right? Yes. I know one time God let me meet, meet a man on the subway train in Hong Kong. I was reading the Bible. And he was next to me read, looking at my Bible. And I told him, this is a Bible with... Uh, the symbols to uh, the, have the Mandarin pronunciation underneath it. And then he said, I'm a Christian too. And then he told, his, told him his story. He said, when I was young, no, he has a hunchback. His back is bent. He said, when I was young, I have this problem. And then Billy Graham came to Hong Kong. And, some, and then Billy Graham at that time had healing. But later he did not because of the pressure from some churches he did not have healing in the, in the beginning he had healing and he told people to take hang, handkerchiefs to the meeting and then take them he would pray over them and then he, 
and then the people take them back. And his family members took the hand, hand, handkerchief back. At that time, he was very painful. His back was bent. And then when they put the handkerchief on him, his back was straight. And he felt very good. He felt healed. He was very happy. But three days later, a monk, a Buddhist monk came to his home and told, told them, you have to put up idols to worship. And then the family did that. And when they did that, the sickness came back. But at that time, he did not have people to help him. So his sickness continued, but he still remembered this. And he, and he, he was sufficient. But years later, he followed Jesus. But then, it was, you know, at that time, he did not get healed. So, Billy Graham had this anointing. And we, you can have this anointing too. This church has, can have this anointing. When you really love God from your heart, really follow Him. Just now, what I said, you remember? The soul include what? The mind, say it together. The mind, the will, the emotions, and then the spirit. Okay, say it together. These four parts of you worship together. Say it again. The four parts worship together. Which are the four parts? The, the mind, the will, the emotions, and the spirit. And in the mind, really appreciate God. In the feelings, you really appreciate God. Okay? We're going to, uh, in a moment, we're going to try to worship like that. And then, when you lead worship, I talk a little bit about leading worship. Then how do you do it? First, you worship like that yourself. And when you lead worship, first you worship wholeheartedly. Do not think of leading worship as a job. Do not think of leading worship just the action, the motion. But first, you yourself worship God. That's the first part. And the second part, you want to lead the people. Then how do you lead the people? We have to use a few kinds of, a uh, uh, few things we want to say. One thing we want to say is to help people to have faith in God. For instance, say, God is here. Say, telling them words that can help, help them, help them to have faith and to follow God. And you can say after me, God is right here. God wants to bless us. God is very happy that we worship God. God is working in our life. Now, all these are telling the truth from the Bible. God is happy with us. God is blessing us. So all this is telling people what the promises of God, the first part. And the second part, you can tell people what to do. Let's worship God. That's it. Let's worship God. Let's appreciate God. We are so happy with God. We like God for what He has done. We like God for who He is. So tell people what to do. And tell people, close your eyes. Say, close your eyes. Raise up your hands. Reach out to God. Really appreciate God. Shout to God. Dance to God. So these are things you can tell people what to do. These are instructions. So first is to declare the grace of God, the, the promises of God first. The second is tell people what to do. And then the third is you actually say it out to worship. For instance, you say, oh Lord, I worship you. Say it with me. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I'm happy with you. Lord, I appreciate you. I want to come close to you. I need you. I depend on you. I rely on you. Hallelujah. I love you. I like you. Now, these are all expressing our worship. There are three things. First is to say the grace of God. The promises of God. Say it. To say the grace and promises of God. Say it. To say the grace and promises of God. That's the first part. The second part is tell people what to do. Say it. Tell people how to worship. Tell people how to worship. And the third part, you lead the worship. You lead the worship. Now, when you talk, don't talk too much. Don't keep saying, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I love you, I thank you. And then say it for 15 minutes. And then 
then it's not praise and worship. You have songs, but in between the songs, you will say that. For instance, you say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, we like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you sing, you can add in words to worship God. Say with me again. The three things you can say. First, the first is what? Say the grace and the promises of God. Say the grace and the promises of God. So God is here. God is blessing us. God is helping us. God is happy to see us worship here. So it's saying what God is, you know, uh, facts about God to help people to have faith in God. The second is to tell people what to do. Let's close our eyes. Let's reach out our hand. Let's touch Him. Let's hug God. <laughs> and then the third is you actually worship. That you praise God and worship God and love God. Now when you say all these things, learn to say it with feelings. Have you noticed when I say it, I say it with feelings? Oh Lord Jesus, I like you. I love you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes you can be loud, sometimes you can be soft. It doesn't have to be the same way all the time. It's better to change. Don't just say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you God, Hallelujah, we love you, we worship you. All very strong. If that's like that, people are not touched. Sometimes, you know, I know there's a tendency for many people when they preach or when they talk, when they leave worship, it's one tone only. It's always excitement. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love the Lord. You know, it's all one tone. But we can change. Let's love the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is very good. He loves us all very much. You change a little bit. It will touch people's heart better. If people talk to you like this, you good, you, I want to be with you. I, I like you. you know, if people talk like that, you don't feel the feeling. But if people say, I like you. I want to be with you. With feelings. It's different. So learn to speak sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes loud, sometimes soft, and some emphasize the key words. This is very important. Key words like, oh Lord, you're so good. Hallelujah, you're so wonderful. <laughs> the key words emphasize. The Lord is with us now. With us now. The Lord is here. Now sometimes the key word, you can say it louder, or sometimes say it softer. The Lord is here. You know this, that this will stand out. The Lord is here. He is with us now. Oh Lord, we like you. <laughs> Change the tone of your words in one sentence. Don't say one whole sentence in the same tone. Change it. Now let's try this. We'll try it in a moment. So when you lead worship, when you preach, mm. this is all very helpful. Yes. Now I would train each topic each day. And you pay attention. I thank God. God has shown me when, many ways to do you know, how to serve God better, how to lead worship better, how to, uh, uh, how to worship better, how to preach better, how to share better, how to counsel better. And you can all learn from that. It's, all from God is glory to God. Okay. Now, in leading worship, also another thing you want to notice is how the people are. You might be very excited on stage, but the people are not responding. And what can you do? Then you have to start with an easy step. Let us clap. clap. Let us raise our hand. Let us dance. And then, if they cannot dance, you just move left to right. Move left to right. You know, just tell them to do simple things like that. Or Fire from your heart. So that's something you can do. Okay, right now I'm going to lead a worship time, a short time, and then I'll let you practice. And then those who want to lead, you can lead. You can just lead a short time, and then I'll give you responses. Okay? Let us stand together. Now first we'll all practice by worshiping with words, with feelings. Let's try this. Say it with feeling. Oh Lord, I love you. Say it. Oh Lord, I love you. I thank you, Jesus. Now, you notice, because I, when I speak, I have resonance. 
that this came from training. Um, it came from training that you know I can uh, when I sing or when I talk, I have resonance that that came from. Uh, you can practice by singing with a with a, you know with the motion like yawning. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Have you noticed the sound is round inside? Hallelujah. It's like yawning. Oh, try yawning. Oh, 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 oh. And then you open up. Oh, oh, hallelujah. This is about voice, and you can practice it every day. And how can you practice? It's like yawning. Oh, 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 oh. Okay? And that's why when I talk, you notice the voice will go up to the ceiling. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! <laughs> that's from the echo, the resonance inside me. Okay? Let's, let's try it with feeling. Oh Lord Jesus, I love you! Say it with feelings. Oh Lord Jesus, I love you! I'm so thankful to you! I worship you! Try to put feelings. And your face too have feelings. I worship you. I worship I'm, so I'm so happy with you. So everyone try that. And then when I lead worship, you also try to do that when we sing. Okay, I'm gonna sing some simple song. And then we can all sing together. <laughs>
your mouth. Oh, ha, 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 all the burdens. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. All the burdens go away. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. moment just prayer oh we worship you Lord. we love you Lord Jesus. we love you Lord Jesus. we like you very much we need you Lord we want you and you alone you can satisfy our soul you can satisfy our bring healing to us. Oh Lord Jesus, change our life. Change our heart. Change our heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus, change our life. Totally. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you enter into a love relationship with Jesus like this? Oh, Jesus, I love you. I worship you. Oh, I need you. I depend on you. My life is in you. Oh, you are my life, you are my strength, you are my Lord, my everything. My life is yours. I put my life in your hand. Oh, I need you. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice in the morning, rejoice at the noon time. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice when the sun goes down. <laughs> you. In this way, can you enter in the presence of God? Can you really love God and enjoy God? Now what I'm doing is, I myself is worshiping. I myself is going very free. Without any kind of burdens, without any kind of restriction, it's totally free. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> because I like God very much. Now does anyone want to try? Just go free. Now you might not be able to go so free because you might say, well, this is too hard. Sometimes lead you into a quiet mode, like, oh, let us put down all our burdens. Let us trust in God and worship Him and put down all our burdens. 
all our burdens are behind us. Put down the weights. Then we can come to Him without weight, without pressure. So you can lead them into different modes of worship. So try, try doing that. It's, it's, it's just not just saying worship or oh, hallelujah, but uh, lead them into different modes and then with your clear voice, loud voice to lead them into like uh, excitement. We thank God with excitement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is so good. Amen. So the voice is very important. Do you notice how my voice is different? The voice, that's something need training. <laughs> my style of leading worship personal worship what does it mean it's like Jesus right here now let us pour our heart to him be more personal it's not just saying like uh, oh worship him uh, let's uh, just and what I mean is don't just use words without personal feeling say it with oh Jesus is right here blessing us now let us open our heart and welcome him let us welcome him in a personal way it's like talking about a person. It's not just like a process. Uh, you understand that? It's not just saying, oh, let us worship Him. Let us give thanks to Him. Sometimes people hear these words, they feel empty. They don't know what it is. That when we give thanks, how do we say it? God, you have given me so many good things. Oh, give me so wonderful food. Thank you, God, for giving me wonderful food. Thank you for giving me new life. Hallelujah. I have new life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So saying things God has done specifically and respond with feelings and emotions and excitement to help people. And then you too, all of you try to go into the worship. Now he's leading, but you all enter that mode of loving God, appreciating God. Okay. Now I know this is not easy, but what I mean is to count the countable blessings of God that you can think of to draw people and also stay in one mode for a while like if it's thanksgiving then it will be thanksgiving for a while and don't jump to other things and then you come to for instance put down burdens let us now close eyes put down our burdens forget about our burdens because god will take care of all this and we come to god lord jesus we just want you we don't want to think about the burden so stay in one one uh, mode if it's about put down burdens, if it's about excitement, hallelujah, let's praise the Lord with joy, hallelujah, dance with the Lord, hallelujah, then you go into the excitement mode. So change, uh, stay in the mode for a, a, a little while before you go to the next mode. And then, of course, you don't s s talk too much. Then you talk and then you sing and then talk and sing. forever hallelujah god always looks for a way to bless us hallelujah he is here god you are so wonderful jesus you are so wonderful god always provides for us this love is always before us hallelujah we give you praise jesus for loving us oh god he loves you somebody he is here for you somebody he is here to love you adore him he is your god let's adore the lord let's adore him for his presence is here oh jesus we give you praise Love the Lord, somebody love the Lord, he is here. His face is in your 
has a pulpit tone it's you have a way of talking it, it doesn't show special excitement or uh, uh, no, no, say a few sentences and, and I'll tell you what it means okay, say a few just not what you were saying try, try just, say. just the motion. yeah just like when you <coughs> did doing just now you're improving I'm helping him too and I'm helping you all too that's okay. right that's just not what you were saying like okay. Jesus you're so wonderful your presence is always here with us. Okay, now it's about the same. Jesus is so wonderful. You're here with me. It's about the same. <laughs> you want to change it. Jesus, you're so wonderful. You're here with us now. Hallelujah. I want to praise you. Hallelujah. Change the way of talking so that when you talk like this, Jesus is here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. Then it's like the same way coming out every time. And people can might not hear what you're saying. When you say using the same tone over and over again, then people won't say it. Now try to change it a little bit. Try, try to see if you can do it. I mean, I know it's difficult, but um, with more excitement and loudness. Yeah, that's okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, you are here, Lord. You are here to be with us. We yes. give you the praise, oh Jesus. He is here to be with us. Hallelujah. People of God, give him the adoration. Yes, Lord. You are here, Jesus, to be with us, oh God. Your presence is here, oh God. We give you the praise. We give you the honor, oh God. Your oh, presence is here to be with us. This for he always loves us. And you always want to be with us. Connect yourself to God. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, yes, Jesus. You are here. Is a big difference? Yeah. A big difference. <laughs> now, yeah, another right. thing I want to say is this. Mm. You want them to enter when you do something is to enter. Now what I mean is, Jesus right here, let us come close to him. You want to enter into connection with Jesus. When you talk about Jesus here, there is a goal for each mode. So when it's Jesus here, let us worship him and say, Jesus, I love you. I love you. I want you. So when you come to that, and then when you change, when you change, for instance, joy, let us all rejoice and put down all our burdens now and rejoice in the Lord as if we were in heaven now. Rejoice like in heaven. So help them to enter that mode and then put down burdens, we'll be putting down burdens and then pray for the church, we'll be, oh Lord Jesus, we want fire to come to this church, we want revival to come to this church, we want change to this church. Then, so each one has a goal. Okay? Very good. I mean, you have the potential. That's why I let you keep doing it. Now, does anyone want to do it? Do you want to try to do it? Yeah. 
very good. You have a lot of expression. And what I suggest uh, to you both is you stay in one mode, about one thing for a while, because you were uh, you have many ideas, but then you did not stay in one. And then for each point, you want to go deeper. For instance, if you just keep saying, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, people might feel blank if you keep saying something. And then how do you say it when you want to lead people into love? Oh, Lord Jesus, you're right here. You're so wonderful to us. We want to love you with all our heart. Oh, Lord, you are my life. I really put you in the first place in my life. Lord Jesus, you are my lover. I love you very much. You are my beloved. I need you. I want you. I want to have a deeper relationship with you. So you stay in that love and the relationship for, for a while before you go to other, other um, themes. So you stay in each theme for a while and there is a goal. The goal is to help people really be able to love people, love God at that time, to reach out to love God, okay? So there is a goal for each for each uh, theme. What I, what I mean themes is like this. One theme could be loving God. One theme is God is here. One theme is God take away our burdens. One theme can be we can rejoice in the Lord. One theme is we can serve God. All these are themes in the Bible. So you can use these themes, different themes in the in the uh, and when you lead worship. And so stay in one theme for a while. Because if you just go from praise the Lord and then you from, uh, go to rejoice and then relax and put down burdens, you just go different ways and then people cannot stay in that. So the goal is that everyone enter that. Now for all the worshipers, then when they lead you, then you enter that. When you say, when she says, oh, the Lord is here. Then you say, Lord is here. You're right here. Because the Bible says He's with us all the time. And, and then when he says, worship him, yes, Lord, I worship him. So it's everyone following that. Okay. Now, does anyone want to try now? It's good that, that, um, that, um. You're
that's one way to say it. But sometimes you can say, let's do that. Let's, that has more energy, I think. But you can do both. But you can say, let's worship together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's jump to the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's, that's more powerful. It's saying, everyone do that together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's now close your eyes. Oh, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. Your presence is like heaven to us right here. And we worship you. It's like entering heaven now. Oh, Lord Jesus. I want to have it. I want to enter heaven right now. Take me there. Take me to enjoy heaven. Take me to enjoy your presence. Take me to be with you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we want to forget about all things in the world. Right now, we want to enter heaven with the Heavenly Father. We adore the Heavenly Father. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, the Holy Spirit, together with all the saints in heaven. This is like heaven. Worshiping you. Oh. Oh. It's like heaven. It's like heaven. We worship you in your presence. It's like heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So you lead people to think about heaven, to come into God's presence with the saints together worshiping. So.